introduce our next speaker, number third of this, of this first day at the Attic. We are all familiar with cloud infrastructure, with giants like AWS and Azure, and the application cloud provided by Salesforce and Workday that add the front office to the cloud. Some of them were mentioned already. Our next speaker believes that now we are seeing the emergence of a third layer, one devoted to data analytics and cross-cloud collaboration. He is the Senior Director of International Product Marketing at Snowflake. So please, let's welcome Ross Perez. Ross, welcome. <laughs> How Thank are you? Thank you so much. Lovely I'm to see you, wonderful. Ross. Ross, let me tell our audience a little problem that we've had uh, with our previous uh, uh, speaker is that the questions arrive a bit late. So guys, remember, Ross has uh, around 35 minute talk. The last five minutes, we have the Q&A. We have Ricardo and Luis from the previous uh, speaker. You send lovely, interesting questions. Ricardo and Luis, sorry, I received them on the iPad, but it was a bit late. So if you want to speak to Ross, if you want to ask him questions, don't hesitate and don't wait do it as soon as possible. I received them immediately, but on the previous case, we miss you. We miss those questions. So, Ross, remember, there's questions for the audience, so uh, remember to think about them and remind them every once in a while. <laughs> okay? So, we're looking forward to listening to you, Ross. So, all yours, whenever you're ready. Welcome. Thank you so much, and I'm excited to be talking about our vision for uh, data in a multi-cloud world. Let's get started. Now, I think most people uh, on the call are probably already familiar with the application cloud. This is where the front office uh, is being run. Uh, tools like uh, Workday, Salesforce, uh, ServiceNow uh, are helping us run our businesses in the cloud. Uh, on the other side, of course, we have the infrastructure cloud uh, where uh, companies like uh, AWS and Azure and GCP are helping organizations actually run their products and their businesses uh, in the back end. Now, these two clouds obviously uh, are, are hosting an enormous uh, amount of data. And many organizations are, are looking at the data that they're storing, both the application cloud and the infrastructure cloud, and realizing that this data is really meaningful and valuable uh, when, when it can be combined with one another. And in addition to you know, having these two separate silos of information uh, in the application and the infrastructure cloud, we're also seeing that data silos are appearing uh, you know, certainly throughout the organization. It's more than just uh, the, these two different clouds that we're dealing with. It's also uh, perhaps having one part of the organization who has deployed its own database to, to be able to serve its own needs. And then other organizations uh, may, have their, may have their own database. And then you have uh, spreadsheets and different files lying around. Um, the bottom line is that it's been becoming ever uh, more difficult to be able to combine these different data sources into a unified view uh, for analytics. Data silos are really the, the key, uh, the, the key issue that's preventing organizations from getting at those really valuable insights they need to get from their data. And it's not simply, uh, like I said, the, the different clouds that organizations are using. Uh, we see it organizationally across many different uh, parts of, uh, of companies that we're working with. We see it across different technologies, whether it's applications or databases. Um, and the bottom line is that when you have all of these different silos uh, separated out, it, it's just a very difficult situation to be able to combine them um, and, and get a unified insight. Now, I hope you'll forgive me uh, for giving a real life example that's uh, a little bit marketing focused. I'm a marketer myself, um, but I think this is something that most people will be able to understand. So what am I talking about? Well, data silos in real life can look a lot like this. Let's say that uh, as a marketing organization, uh, our goal is to, to send uh, an email send and to get people to click through on that email, arrive on the website, and then uh, perhaps sign up for an offer on the website. Now, most organizations are using an email automation tool uh, to send those emails out to their customers. Uh, and that data uh, in, in many organizations can be stored in Marketo as an example. Now, on the other side, uh, it's quite common for web log and clickstream data to be stored uh, in a data lake on AWS or GCP or, or Azure. Um, in this case, let's say that it's, it's sitting in S3. 
Now, having these two valuable data sets uh, on their own, we can analyze them um, and be able to understand, uh, independent of one another, uh, the effects that they're having. As an example, I can see how many people clicked through my email that I sent in Marketo. And on the other side, I can see uh, you know what the effect was uh, of, of people landing on the website and and, uh, and signing up for for different offers, but the real question is, and, and I think the higher degree of value that can be offered um, to the organization is by combining these two valuable data sets together. In other words, being able to say not just how many people clicked through uh, on a, an email and not how many people uh, signed up for an offer on the website, but which specific people. Uh, and, and which, in, uh, which piece of the email they were interacting with in order to get to uh, the website and actually click through that offer. Those are where we're able to increase uh, the, the, not only the value that each individual uh, email is, is providing to the organization and, um, and optimize the website, be, be, be able to do so for specific and individualized people. So how do we do that? How do we actually get that unified insight? Well. I would argue, and Snowflake's argument, is that there's a place and a, and a huge need for a third cloud, the data cloud. This is a place where you can combine data from the application cloud and from the infrastructure cloud into a single unified location that you can use to then analyze and find uh, those contextual pieces of information that are so much more valuable, just like I was saying before, where you're able to see not just who clicked on an email and, and how many people uh, end up signing up for an offer, but which emails were most effective at guiding the customers that we're most interested in to signing up for the right things on the website. Well, what would we need in order to actually bring this data to fruition, to bring all our data together, to unify it, and then to network it together so that we could actually get these unified insights? Well, there are a few things that I think are very important. The first one would be that, well, this layer, this data cloud, would need to be completely cloud agnostic, certainly uh, in the sense of being able to combine data from the infrastructure and application clouds, but also in being cloud agnostic to uh, which infrastructure cloud you're using. So if you're using AWS or Azure or GCP, um, you know you can take data from any one of those uh, infrastructure clouds and bring it together and, uh, and network it together, um, no matter where you're coming from. The second piece is unlimited performance and scale. Having uh, all of that data in a unified location is certainly a wonderful goal and something that can offer a lot of value. But if you can't analyze the data at the speed and um, cadence that your organization expects, then it's not going to be able to solve the problem that you're actually going after, which is getting those next level insights uh, to everyone in a much more efficient fashion. The third piece that uh, is, is incredibly important, I think maybe the most important piece uh, of the data cloud is being able to seamlessly and securely share data, not just within your organization, but with partners and customers, trusted partners and customers outside of your organization. If there's a secure way of sharing data, I think that opens up a lot of opportunities for additional contextual data sets um, that you can bring in and certainly for added value that you can add to your uh, customers and partners who want to have um, you know, reasonable uh, data sets for, the, for themselves to look at from you. The last piece is that this needs to be secure and governed. Um, having uh, this enormous amount of power in, in unified data that you can analyze on the fly and share with anybody uh, that, that you uh, see fit to grant access to, um, is, is really more dangerous than anything else if you're not able to secure and govern it. So of course we need that additional element. Now, we believe at Snowflake that Snowflake's data platform can support the data cloud uh, with, our, uh, with our innovative uh, solution that enables you to bring all of your data into one unified location on the cloud and then run multiple workloads on top of it. So Snowflake can help you to with data engineering, with data lake, with data warehouse, data science, data applications, and data sharing all in one location on the cloud. And you can connect Snowflake to your OLTP databases, your enterprise applications, your third party data, web and log data. Um, and on the other side, of course, you can serve your data monetization, reporting needs, um, ad hoc analytics, and real time analytics. 
Now, this may seem uh, like a, a relatively uh, large amount of things that the Snowflake platform is able to solve. And the reason why Snowflake is able to do this is architecture. So very simply, you can take Snowflake's cloud agnostic layer as the first step. So we enable you to run Snowflake on any one of the uh, any one of the infrastructure clouds that you choose. So whether it's GCP or Azure or AWS, Snowflake can run in those clouds and not in simply in the cloud, but also uh, within the region of your choosing. And on top of the cloud agnostic layer, uh, Snowflake has, utilizes the storage uh, systems, the, the uh, cloud storage systems of our cloud infrastructure providers to enable you to store uh, unlimited amounts of data in the cloud. On top of that, you can use Snowflake's multi-cluster compute to spin up uh, as many uh, compute clusters as you need at any given time to serve different uh, use cases and workloads within the organization. This is how Snowflake, uh, in, in part, how Snowflake is able to serve such a diverse uh, array of workloads, everything from data lake and data warehouse to data science. Now, you can't be doing all of those things at the same time without a single centralized store of data that you can uh, have independent compute running on top of. And that's really the, the key to uh, Snowflake providing these, uh, these really wide diversity of workloads uh, access to data at the same time. And the third piece is cloud services. So this is all run as a service uh, with the optimization and management and transactions taken care of for you by Snowflake. Now, let's look at how Snowflake uh, can sort of fulfill the needs of, of the data cloud um, as we talked about before. And the first one, of course, is cloud agnostic. And Snowflake is available uh, not just in the different uh, cloud infrastructure providers, but in many uh, regions worldwide. So uh, if you're an organization that is either looking at a multi-cloud strategy or you work with partners that are on a different cloud than you, or perhaps uh, you are, you're looking into um, a globally um, available uh, you know, data platform, and Snowflake can certainly support you with our worldwide coverage. And it's not simply being available in any one of these individual regions that makes Snowflake so powerful. It's also being able to network this all together. This is this is really the, the key to the data cloud, is being able to uh, not only regionally replicate um, across regions uh, from, say, AWS Oregon to AWS Virginia, but also replicating across continents from AWS Virginia to AWS Dublin, or cross cloud from AWS Dublin to uh, Azure Amsterdam. This is simply an example, um, but it certainly could be true uh, across a multitude of different regions and cloud infrastructure providers. Bottom line is, of course, that you're able to bring together a unified view of data uh, worldwide. This is a concept that we call the global data mesh. So having all of these different regions and having data uh, residing in different ones and being able to bring it together is, is really where the global data mesh comes in and it's an incredibly uh, powerful thing to be able to do. Now, the other piece uh, that we're going to need for the data cloud is unlimited performance and scale. So having all of your data in one location, being able to network it all together in different regions with the global data mesh is very powerful. But how are we going to actually get at that data and, and serve the diverse needs of the organization? Well, in the past, it was very difficult to do so because you're dealing with limited fixed resources. You know, generally, if you had a data platform or something that, you know, you installed a database on a server and that was sort of the the uh, the amount of capacity that you had to work with. So that means that if you had multiple people who were creating the database at the same time, they'd often uh, conflict with one another and it would create a concurrency issue. You'd also have uh, workload uh, issues where let's say that you're loading data at a particular time, say Monday morning. Um, well, if you have people querying that data at the same time with a business intelligence product, you often run into a situation where you have workload contention um, and those two conflicting workloads will run into one another. Um, in, the, in the past, uh, people would often try to tune their way out of these performance issues and these concurrency issues, uh, even though you know, the, it was really only a palliative way of dealing with the problem. Um, but people would tune and index and partition and, and turn knobs to try to improve performance. Um, and it's something that uh, was, of course, very time consuming and difficult to do, but didn't really actually solve the problem. And 
this tuning, of course, would lead uh, in the long run to manual upkeep, where you know you have to re-index and you have to repartition, and um, you have to continually do this tuning in order to uh, be able to arrive at a good situation. And of course, many traditional data platforms and databases uh, just quite simply needed to be uh, installed uh, on prem, and, and that had its own manual uh, upkeep along with it. The Snowflake approach to performance is significantly different. Now, I talked about our architecture already, where you're able to isolate uh, different workloads on different compute clusters. And that is, of course, the basis uh, of the immense power that uh, Snowflake can help you to, to give to your organization uh, on top of unified data. So this workload isolation can work in multiple different ways. Uh, the two most powerful ways it can work is by, first of all, helping you to separate out the loading of data and the uh, and the querying of data into two separate operations. But also at the same time, you could be running data science or, um, or different workloads like that on top of uh, the same shared and unified data. But the second way that workload, uh, well, the second way that Snowflake can help you uh, to deal with, with these performance issues is by um, enabling you to scale to different numbers of people. So if you've got a Monday morning rush of a lot of people trying to query data in their BI tool, well, Snowflake can expand to serve that use case. And to make it even more powerful, it's delivered as a service. So it's really intended to be very simple, uh, self-tuning um, and automated for your, your purposes so that you don't have to spend all of that time manually tuning and retuning uh, your data platform to arrive where you need to. Now, before I mentioned that seamless and secure data sharing was perhaps the most important piece of the data cloud, and I'd like to go into a little bit more detail about how Snowflake helps you to support this. Now, traditionally, sharing data has been something that's been very difficult to do. Um, and it really goes down to uh, the ultimate um, you know, truth of data sharing, which is that if you need to give somebody else data, then usually what you'd be doing is you'd be actually physically taking a copy of that data and sending it to them, whether it's uh, you know, in, in ETL pipeline or data marts or APIs or uh, FTPs in cloud buckets, uh, you know, you're sending a file to someone else um, to give that data to them. And of course, the issues that that would bring are, are, are quite a few. Uh, so for, it's, for instance, um, you know, of course, it's difficult to copy and move the data. It takes time. Um, it's costly to maintain these pipelines and data marts and tools that you're using to share data. It's certainly error prone in the sense that um, you know once you once you share data, anything could happen with that file, uh, which is also why it's a bit unsecure. And of course, because you're physically sending you know a file, your data is going to be delayed by definition. You're you're sending a snapshot of the data that you're working with. Now, Snowflake's uh, multi-cloud uh, and, and cross-cloud uh, data platform provides a much better way to share data. Because all of your data is networked together in Snowflake, uh, we can do something very interesting, which is by enabling you to share data and access to data as opposed to sharing a piece of the data and sending that data um, to someone else. So instead of sending a file, you actually decide to give them a secure and governed access to the data that's sitting in your Snowflake instance. And they can view that with their own Snowflake instance. What this means is that there's no copying or moving. Again, you're querying data directly uh, from someone else's Snowflake instance, with their permission, of course. This means that the data is live with no delays. You can share very personalized and secure views across a multitude of different customers or partners uh, or people that you would like to share data with. Um, in a very, uh, you know, uh, automated fashion. And of course, because uh, this is something that is done in an automated fashion, it's governed and you can revoke this access when you want to. And it's globally available uh, across the global data mesh as I was talking about before. Now, taking this up a step further, uh, what if you want to share data programmatically uh, across a, a large number of customers or or, uh, or partners that you're working with. Well, that's where the Snowflake Data Exchange comes in. This is a private exchange of data where you can put certain data sources that you think are valuable uh, up for people to be able to access. And of course, you can control who has access to, to all of this data. This means that you can kind of you can publish and, and create a catalog of the data that you think other people, uh, your your partners and customers, may find valuable, and be able to connect to that data uh, so that they can use it within their own analytics. Um, 
And on the other side of this, um, because the data exchange works both ways, if you have a customer or partner that you would like to receive data from, uh, you can uh, certainly do so through the Snowflake Data Exchange using data sharing in the back end. And again, taking it up one step further, we have the Snowflake Data Marketplace where you're able to publish um, this data publicly so that you have live and ready to create data available to people, um, to anyone uh, in the world, if you so choose. Again, this is, <laughs> this is not something that is mandatory. It's something that if you want to or you have a need, perhaps a compliance need to share data uh, with everyone in the world, well, you can certainly do so with the Snowflake Data Marketplace. On the other side, again, it's a two-way street. Um, there's certainly a large number of, of um, organizations that Snowflake is working with that have published data on the data marketplace that you can bring in. And I'll talk about that in just a second. For instance, we have uh, Weather Source, which has made weather data available on the Snowflake data marketplace. So for instance, if you're an air airport operator and you would like to know uh, why particular uh, days have been uh, worse for operations, well, you can use weather source data to see if uh, weather was affecting that. You can bring that in uh, live with live access to data through the Snowflake Data Marketplace. We also have a partner, Star Schema, who has published on the Snowflake Data Marketplace a comprehensive data set of COVID-19 data worldwide. So you can actually go connect to the Star Schema data within Snowflake, and you can uh, dig into uh, worldwide data uh, of the COVID-19 inf infection and uh, the uh, work of, of governments to go and combat that. Now, the last piece that we need uh, beyond being crowd agnostic, and, and enabling you to, to host all of your data from multiple different clouds and having unlimited performance and scale to serve all of your users and enabling seamless and secure data sharing with customers and partners and people within your organization. If we're able to do all of those things, well, it will only be uh, powerful if we're able to secure and govern it. And certainly Snowflake security uh, is, is incredibly well thought out. Uh, we have the, the SOC and PCI and FedRAMP uh, certifications, um, and of course, uh, RBAC for accessing um, and, and logging into the product, along with uh, SAML multi-factor multi -factor authentication uh, for, for enabling you to um, connect with uh, your organization's uh, authentication protocols and ensure that only the right people are having access to your Snowflake uh, data platform. I won't go into every single piece of this slide, but of course the, the idea and what I'm trying to share is the uh, in-depth view that Snowflake has taken to security. Data governance is a, is a different angle uh, on, on the security of your data and the value of your data. And it's one that I'm very interested personally. In fact, tomorrow um, I'll be speaking on uh, the, the panel on data ethics, and I think data governance is a big piece of this, where um, you're asking the questions about who in the organization uh, should not have access to data, but also who should have access to data, and how we can um, ensure that the right people uh, have access to the right insights at the right time. Um, of course, governance is, is beyond just control of data. It's also about understanding your data, what's inside of it, um, where potential issues uh, may, may come to light, um, and being able to combine, combine um, your, your governance and, and your control of that data uh, across the entire organization. And governance is particularly interesting when talking about data silos. If you have data in multiple different silos and multiple different clouds in different locations, it's very difficult to be able to govern that. And that's why Snowflake can provide a significant amount of value in the data cloud by putting your data into a location that you can control more easily. At the end of the day, having uh, these four components can enable some real collaboration inside of the data cloud. And of course, uh, Snowflake is what makes that possible. Let me talk about a real example um, instead of uh, just, just talking about stuff like I'd actually like to share um, something which is much more interesting, which is this is this in, in action, how our customers are actually using uh, the data cloud to power their analytics and their own, uh, their own customers. So Atheon is a very uh, interesting company. They're a leader in the analytics of the flow of goods and their customers, so Atheon's customers are uh, suppliers of, of uh, of consumer packaged goods, so uh, people like Carlsberg and Heinz, and their goal, of course, uh, is to enable their customers, these suppliers of, of uh, consumer packaged goods, to understand 
wind products may be out of stock and ensure that they are never uh, you know, run out of product uh, on the shelves. Now, I'll talk a little bit uh, more about that in a second, how Atheon actually uses Snowflake to do so. But if you think about it, Atheon's situation is relatively complex. Now, they have multiple customers. They are working with a multitude of consumer packaged goods companies, um, and they all need to see data um, at the same time. And these customers are sitting on different clouds as well. So you have this, this situation of working with lots of different organizations that are in different clouds. And how do, what's the most effective way to, to get at that? Now, at the same time, Atheon has multiple partners who need to provide data uh, on multiple clouds to Atheon. So these are the supermarkets, the places where the consumer packaged goods companies are selling their product to. And because of the, the multitude uh, of different customers and partners they're working with, they're also dealing with a very large volume of data that's bi-directional. So they're getting data from their uh, partners, the, the grocery stores that people are actually selling. These, these goods in and they're receiving data and sharing data back to their customers, the, the companies that are selling the consumer packaged goods. At the end of the day, Atheon's goal is to ensure that this never happens, that no product is ever uh, out of stock uh, in, in the grocery store. Their product is called SkewTrack, and SkewTrack, of course, is powered by Snowflake, and it works relatively simply, uh, at least in this uh, in this uh, view here, where Atheon is taking data from multiple different retailers, combining it in their SkewTrack automated data transformation system, and then providing it up through dashboards and their own Explorer product to their customers, the, uh, the consumer packaged good co goods companies like Heinz and Carlsberg. In the back end, Snowflake is powering this through our data sharing, uh, data sharing uh, tool. And they're using reader accounts within uh, any one of their multiple, multiple customers to give a very fine grain slice of data back to each specific customer. What's interesting about this is that Atheon can create a, a single uh, database and then create customized views automatically for each one of their customers that they can then uh, provide these powerful uh, D3 and, and Tableau visualizations on top of. Essentially, um, what this means is that they can automate the entire process from the ingestion of data from their partners to the storing of that data, the sharing with their part or with their customers, and then of course the display and distribution of the data on the back end. Because this is all unified and it's live and and it's cross-cloud, it means that everybody's looking at the same single number. Well, what do their customers have to say? Well, Peter Hall, who's a UK sales director for Kraft Heinz, said that SkewTrack means that they have a single view of their performance across all of their retails, retailers. They can understand their data much faster and then speak to them in their language about what to do, ultimately resulting in fewer empty shelves. It's an incredibly powerful thing uh, that, that they've enabled them to do. Um, and of course, this gives them a much better view into their business. Uh, Alex Roll, who is the head of convenience for Carlsberg, said that equipped with the data from SkewTrack, he was able to drop a note to the co-op supply chain team, and subsequently they made a significant order of around 2,000 uh, hectoliters, which is 400,000 uh, pounds in terms of sales uh, for Carlsberg. So incredibly powerful insight they were also able to, to bring um, from their data that they're receiving from Atheon. And this is a, a good example of, of contextual data like I was talking about before. Um, and where you're able to not just understand what the orders were, but um, being able to see uh, when they, in uh, using past data, when uh, the orders may have run out and when they can go in for an additional sale and uh, create more revenue for the organization. Now, uh, I'm coming close to the end of my presentation, so if you have any questions, I wanted to remind you right now that this is a really good time to be able to <laughs> send your questions in uh, so we can be sure to get to them. I, I want to make sure to be able to get to all of the questions that you may have about the data cloud, about Snowflake, and of course about uh, our, our wonderful customer, Atheon. Now, of course, it isn't just Atheon that Snowflake is working with, and we have thousands of customers worldwide, uh, including uh, Fortune 10 companies like McKesson, um, large organizations in Europe, such as Sainsbury's, um, and everything from technology organizations uh, to, uh, to insurers. So really, um, the Snowflake platform uh, and the data cloud is something that can be usable, not just to, to organizations like Atheon, but really to a broad range of, uh, 
organizations in different industries as well. Now, we wouldn't be as powerful as we are without being able to uh, work alongside the uh, other tools that organizations are using. So this is everything from the BI tools uh, like Tableau and ThoughtSpot to, um, you know, the, the uh, ETL uh, tools that you're using every day, like Fivetran and Matillion, uh, to, of course, the SI partners that you're using to implement all of these technologies in a really effective way. If you bring it all together, uh, it, it really looks to the rise of the data cloud, where this third, this all important third layer um, for data is, is starting to emerge in the cloud, where you can take data from the application cloud and infrastructure clouds in multiple different regions across multiple uh, different cloud infrastructure providers into a single unified location that can help you to serve those contextual and relevant insights back to your organization and with your customers and partners, as we saw with Atheon. It's an exceptionally powerful idea and one that we're seeing uh, in action uh, all across uh, the world and certainly within EMEA. In fact, uh, Snowflake uh, will, will be hosting our own uh, summit, the, the Data Cloud Summit this week. And so if you're interested in learning a bit more, I would just look up the Data Cloud Summit and, and please join us for that uh, event uh, occurring this week. So that brings me to the end of my presentation, and I would love to take questions. Hopefully, I gave uh, enough of a warning there. Uh, so that we can get some <laughs> I'm not sure there. about that because uh, we're a bit slow here. I don't know why, but it was fantastic, Ross, having you uh, talking about well, giving us all the the overview about Snowflake. Do you know? Do you know now that snowflakes in winter will never be the same for anyone again? You know, every time we see a snowflake, we'll think of you. So um, thank you to Ross Perez, which you actually define yourself as a, as a data guy, a B2B marketer, but as a data guy. And uh, it was a very clear uh, overview of, uh, of the three clouds that you mentioned. And I mentioned at the, in the introduction, you talk about the application cloud, the infrastructure cloud, and the, the data cloud, of course. Uh, and you told us the secret is the architecture, the whole architecture of Snowflake. That was fantastic. So in that sense, uh, well, uh, let me see questions, but um, <clears throat> we don't have much time, but you did a good job. They're asking you regarding the access uh, to data you mentioned as a way of sharing data, uh, despite being a two-way private process, could you explain more on the security side, the authentication you were mentioning? Could you give us more details about that security? Yeah, of course. I'll, I'll, uh, you know. so so the, the data sharing that Snowflake uh, enables is, is enabled through a secure view. So you can think of um, in the back end, um, the data that's being stored in Snowflake is very similar to a relational database uh, that you may have used in the past. So it's all sitting in a database in a table with rows and columns. Um, and within those uh, rows and columns, you can use a secure view to basically um, say for any given customer or partner that you want to share data with, exactly which rows and columns are available uh, for them to view. And in fact, Snowflake is, is uh, also, um, you know, can also enable you to, to hide certain pieces of data that you, uh, you know, or obfuscate them so that they can be a little bit more secure uh, depending on, on how you want to share data. So a really good example of this is, you, know, you might want to share the uh, country code of the, um, of the phone numbers that your your uh, you know customers or partners might be using with a different uh, person, but you don't want to share the actual phone number itself because that's of course something that's personally identifiable, um, and so you can use uh, Snowflake to mask that data when you're sharing it. So there's really a lot of fine-tuned uh, capability that you can have to be very specific about not only who you're sharing data with, but what you're sharing and what <laughs> you know even even what specific pieces within the cell are, are, are visible to those uh, other people. Okay, well, at the end of the day, what they're asking you, Adam, and I'm sure this question comes up all the time, is the security. How secure it is? Is it safe? It's, uh, which is the, the, <laughs> the, oh, the million, the, the, the question that comes, re repeats when you talk about data, which is where we, and, and we always have unheard examples of, of uh, not so secure uh, environments, but obviously it's not your case. They're also asking you about the governance. You mentioned, which I'm not sure, uh, Ross, if you're going to speak about this tomorrow, 
in your panel uh, and at the launch uh, uh, panel you have in tomorrow afternoon. But um, to explain a bit more about the governance, how do you uh, decide who in the organization who should have and not have uh, certain data? How does Snowflake uh, yeah. deals with that? Well, no, that's, and I'm so glad you brought that up because it's actually something I'm, I'm super passionate about. My, my background is actually uh, from the BI world. So I used to work at Tableau and yeah, you see yeah. lots of customers uh, trying to spread insight throughout their organization. So I'm, I'm a big fan of, of actually sharing data with a lot of people in the organization. Not, not saying just to flippantly do that, but I think it's about doing it with, with the right questions. So in other words, it's like, um, you're starting from the question of um, what, what data do people need to be able to actually answer the questions that they need to answer in order to do their jobs correctly? Uh, and and we should be providing data to people in the organization, um, you know, fairly broadly. However, um, there are certainly different um, different pieces of data that are going to be highly sensitive. And those things need to be protected. They need to be secured. They need to be um, significantly more tightly governed. Um, but you know, I like to approach governance from from the perspective of um, you know, who, who does need access to data, um, and rather than the, uh, you know, rather than immediately saying that um, everybody, <laughs> everybody should be blocked. Because what's the point in having all this wonderful data and exactly. information? <laughs> <people don't have> <laughs> Exactly. Uh, we have still a bit more time for another question. Uh, Alex asks you, well, thank you for the clear presentation. Can you please expand on the benefits of using Snowflake with supply, supply chain businesses? Thanks. Of course, yeah. And, and of course, the Atheon example is, is a really good one. Um, I think the supply chain uh, use case is, is perhaps the most, in, or one of the most interesting uh, for, for having Snowflake in the data cloud because you have such a diverse network of people that you're working with and, and a lot of people. Um, so uh, an example um, of, of where this adds a lot of value is, you know, if you're, if you're a, an organization that's working in the supply chain at any level, uh, chances are that you're working with dozens or potentially even hundreds of organizations. Now, if you have a need to share data with them, that means that you could be creating dozens or hundreds of different files to, to send the same data to, to different people. Um, or, or even more complicated, we might be sending different data to different people. Um, with with uh, Snowflake um, and our data sharing technology, what's really powerful is that instead of doing all of this individual file sends, you can you know use that secure view that I mentioned before, um, and and literally with one command you can give access um, in an automated fashion to all of these different organizations. But you can give them, like I was saying, a very uh, restricted subset of view, um, which which I think is is so powerful. Um, the other the other thing that we see lots of supply chain organizations running into is complexity in different types of data. So they may receive data from customers or from their partners. So let's say that use the Atheon example, right? They're working with Sainsbury's, they're working with co-op, they're working with all these different companies. And when they're receiving data, um, they're, they may receive it in different formats from all of these uh, different suppliers. So what's so important is being able to take JSON, Avro, XML, Parquet data, transform it um, and flatten it if they want to, um, or perhaps just store it in its new format and put it in Snowflake where they can uh, then kind of in a unified way uh, transform the data into a, a, a single picture that they can then share back. So um, taking that complexity and turning it into an asset um, is, is really what the data cloud is all about for supply chain organizations, because it is such a complex and, and difficult world, um, but it doesn't have to be quite as hard as it has been in the past. Well, Ross, thank you so much. We run out of time, unfortunately, that's the bad news. The good news is that if you want to see Ross uh, uh, very soon, well, he mentioned the Data Cloud Summit that they're organizing this week, right? Or soon. But if you can't wait until then, you can see Ross again and talk about Snowflake uh, tomorrow at the uh, lounge. They have a panel boom of data ethics. Is that right? 
So I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more interesting uh, issues and there'll be more questions coming up. So watch out for that. If you want to speak to Ross, uh, you have questions pending. Meet him tomorrow at lounge at uh, 6.15, 18 hours 15. Ross, it was lovely having you. I told you the snowflakes will never be the same again. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow <laughs> you. at the lounge. See you then. Thank you so much. Uh, and for the rest of the audience, uh, don't go very far because in a few minutes we're going to meet our last speaker, the last keynote of today. So see you at the attic in a minute. Bye-bye.